think they've used this room since we were in here last time. <laughs> Come here. Actually, I love these Zoom meetings for this per for this task force purpose a yeah. lot. I think Mr. Gentry, this is uh, Dale of Person County IT. Um, Hi. I can uh, promote you to co-host if you'd like, or oh. we can continue as we are. Okay, now um, bear with me because I'm not all that fantastic. So you're going to co-host? That's fine. Okay. Um, I was wondering the the raised hand. Is there something I, I may address? Oh no, I think it was just me. A mistake. Okay. You can. <laughs> How do I turn it off? Oh, uh, I can do that for you. Okay. Yeah, we're just. And I, I also made sure that we have a um, attendee view is following the speaker's view instead of the host view, so that uh, that was the error that from last time. Okay. But the the one that will still have the full screen when the presenters there, correct? Well, that's that's going to be dependent on on the user's individual. You know, what they have clicked on, what they would do, but uh, for it would default to the speaker view. I believe they can still change it. Yeah, no, if it defaults to the speaker Hello, view, Randy. that's fine. Hello, nice. How are y'all doing? Have to wait to... I'm going to stick the old back for some lesson to help New York on those come out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a t shirt too. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah. They have like the first one I saw was Don't Move, Don't Move Jersey, my North Carolina. Yeah. I saw that one. So. I've got a little bolder in my, my years, I guess, because you know, selling property, people are like, wow, taxes are this and that. And that, and that way for a reason. Yeah. They don't think you're going to come down and implement what. Was what what you what caused you, you to move what you're leaving from yeah. what you're leaving? Exactly. Try to remember that. Try to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, I haven't heard from anybody. Okay. Well, I mean, so it, when he calls me, I don't know what. So he starts in and then, you know, gets into that situation with the building inspection. Then he starts. Casey, oh, hi, Lisa. This is PJ Gentry, Person County. How are you? I am. I'm just checking in. We sent Kevin uh, a link um for the for the presentation i was just checking in just, just a few minutes before four so we got five minutes but i just want to make sure he received the link and okay cool well, we are so looking forward to, to meeting with him okay well like i said he's got five minutes no rush so i just want to thank you so much in advance thank you i think bye-bye Yeah, 
I think we were talking about a nice, a nice right. sunny day like this. Um, a beer, cold beer. Okay. <laughs> Just yeah. 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 All right, let's go. You want one? <laughs> I'll take one too. Yeah. Give me one too, Keith. By the way, might as well. Everybody's yeah. doing. Uh, you know, what's going on, Mandy? I was wondering, I think I have the heat when they first put the thing in the country and bought the top head. And I emailed him about six months ago and he didn't reply back at all. But you may want to use mail again. I am surprised he was able to get the energy to I'm going to, you guys ready to, it's a little early one. Go ahead and get rolling. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I cannot unmute him. Okay. Good afternoon. Can you hear us, Keith? Kevin or Kevin? I can. Yes. Okay. There you are. Excellent. So, Kevin, I'm PJ Gentry. I am so absolutely honored to meet you and thank you very much. Excuse me <coughs> for your time today. I have a helping picture. So, this is. <laughs> She's excited, and we are too. We are we're bubbling here. We, we appreciate your uh, time today, and uh, we're eagerly uh, look forward to the information that you're willing to serve with us. Uh, I'm Tommy Winstead. I'll let you all introduce yourself. I'm David Zolkowski. Keith Epstein. Cecil Barker. Randy King. I'm talking to you. Thanks, thanks for having me. I um, hope hope that I can bring a little bit of insight that will be helpful for you and, um, and the work that you're doing here. Great. Okay, so basically the task force members have some formats and some, some questions they'd like to ask you. But um, if you'd like to start out and kind of give us an overview of you know, where you've come from, say the last five to 10 years with your economic development program, some of the hurdles you've jumped over and, and successes you've had and things you might do different, it just kind of brings up to where you are today with how you're, how you're functioning, structured and operated and, and, and where, the, where the money flows in and out of the organization. Sure, um, so I'll, I'll start right in and feel free to interrupt at any time if you have any questions about anything. Um, or if you want to redirect me, I'm happy to do that as well. So our organization has been around since 1985. Um, we had, a, we had a, um, a chamber of commerce at that time. And in 85, they said, hey, we need to have an arm that focuses really more specifically on the industrial sector. And so um, we got started out of that. And the, actually the chamber exec at the time came over to head up the founding of our organization um, so we were established as a 501c6. Uh, we are a public-private partnership. Um, we also have an affiliated C3 um, that, uh, quite honestly, we're, we're still trying to figure out how best to utilize that after all these years. But we do have a separate board for that, um, and there's some overlap. So I'm, I still head up that organization as well. Um, the last few years, we've been meeting on our um, on our obligational one year, uh, one meeting a year schedule. Um, but there, we're, we're, we've got some things in the works that we, we hope will bring that organization back into uh, more productive use. Um, we have a 20 member board right now. And the board in that structure was established about four years ago. Um, Prior, prior to that, we were almost entirely a private sector board and some of our local governments 
um, because they are our primary funders, wanted to have a seat at the table. And so today we have a 20 member board um, and, and in order to try to continue that public private sector partnership, um, eight of those members are members of uh, the public sector. So um, the chairman of our county board of commissioners and the county manager, and then we have six mayors. Um, now that's not all the municipalities we have. So the, the five smaller municipalities, um, they're on a, either a two year rotation or a three year rotation. And so over a two or three year period, all of our mayors have a seat, uh, formally a voting seat on our board. Although those members, those mayors are always welcome to come and participate. Um, they just don't have a voting, uh, you know, they don't have a voting voice if they are not in their specific term of office. Um, the other 12 members are private sector members. And we try to do that with good um, geographic diversity. Uh, we try to do that also with um, good industry sector diversity. So we've got manufacturing and banking and, and we've got some developers and you know, that kind of runs, runs the gamut. Um, most, of, most of those private sector by sector are manufacturing since that's really what our primary focus is at our EDC. Um, we have three year terms um, and those, we, we really have a single three year term. Then you're supposed to take a year off before you come back on the board. Um, this past year, we changed that structure a little bit um, because, you know, after, after three years of serving on a board like this, sometimes you're really just finding your stride. Um, and so if we have um, a member or two that we deem would be appropriate and they're willing to come when they roll off their full year term, full three year term, they can roll back on to our executive committee for an additional three years. So um, it's still fairly limited, but that does open up some opportunities for those that are really engaged and want to continue to serve in some capacity to do so for an additional three year term. Um, so from, from the standpoint of funding, um, and we are pro pu public private, but still the lion's share of our funding comes from local governments. Uh, so our budget this year, just in round figures is about half a million dollars and um, about really about 70% of that comes from Randolph County. Um, so Randolph County government is by far our largest um, funder. And we actually, we actually do have a formal contract with Randolph County to, to provide economic development services on behalf of the county. Um, another roughly 19, 19 and a half percent is from our other local governments, our municipalities. So only about 10% of our budget comes from the private sector. Um, you know, it, it, that there's pluses and minuses to that. Um, I think the positives are, if you've ever been involved in an organization where you have constantly have to be thinking about where your dollars are coming from and fundraising, um, it's kind of nice to be in a situation where there are government appropriations on an annual basis and uh, you don't have to worry so much about the fundraising side. Um, on the other hand, you know, the private dollars are relatively limited. And I, sometimes I feel like if we went out and really targeted some private sector fundraising, that would, that would free us up and give us some dollars that we could use with a little more discretion. Um, you know, where we are right now, because we're so dependent on those government dollars, if we have projects that require additional funding, as, as you probably well know, it's all always going back to the local governments and going through the public hearing process for allocation of additional dollars. Um, and our local governments are very supportive of that, um, but it's, it's not moving very rapidly when you have to go through that, through that process. So, um, so I'm torn, right? So there's positives and there's negatives to that, um, but overall, I think it's working, it's working pretty well for us, although we have had some conversations about you know, maybe we should be doing some, um, some additional fundraising. And, and for those purposes, that would be, hey, we've got some other things that we really wanna do pro programmatically, for example. Um, 
And if we had some additional dollars from the private sector, that would really free us up to, to go after some other things that would be beneficial um, to our existing industry, for example, and really building out some of those programs. Um, I think the, the other thing that I'll say of our board is probably goes without saying, but all those private sector members are also um, partnership members with the EDC. So they are funders of our organization. Um, let's see, primary program areas. Um, and so the primary program areas we have, and I'll start with what we call BRE, that's business retention and expansion. Um, we, we feel like that's probably the most important thing that we can do, even though that doesn't traditionally get the most press. Um, but we really take seriously our role of relationship with um, the existing industry that we have across the county. And relationship building is super important. Um, it takes a while to build those relationships. Uh, but we're at the point now where we're often receiving those inquiries directly from the companies um, not when we're reaching out, we certainly do outreach, although that's been heavily curtailed over the last year and a half or so. Um, our, our visits are down and there's only so much information you can glean when you're doing Zoom meetings and having phone calls and um, exchanging emails. That, that information exchange really blossoms when you're in person with them. Um, but fortunately, we have those relationships so that we are receiving inquiries directly from our companies. Um, in fact, just yesterday, um, I guess the day before yesterday, I had one of our industries reach out and say, hey, we're, you know, we're doing these renovations on this building and we're, we've been at this a while and we're hoping to get our CEO on Thursday of this week. And now the natural gas guys are telling us we got to have another meter and we have no idea when they can get out here. Can you run some interference for us? Um, so we love getting those types of inquiries and that's really always based upon um, on relationships. So if they, they didn't trust us and know that we were really there for them and that we really had their back, then they wouldn't be reaching out to us. Um, the other thing that I'll specify, it's just with respect to, um, to our BRE program, that's available to any manufacturer across the community. I don't care if they're a funder of our organization or not. Um, my role and our organizational role and our contract with the county says we support that existing manufacturing because that's where the majority of jobs and investment come from in any community in any given year. And sometimes we, we kind of overlook that impact of those existing manufacturers. So if we can help to support them and help them to make sure that there's a, an environment that is uh, conducive to them continuing to grow and thrive. And, and if they know that they can get a little bit of love from us by reaching out to them, those, those intangibles sometimes make a huge difference. Um, so the second program area that we have is attraction. Um, and I would say attraction and marketing are sometimes really closely um, joined together and sometimes there are a little bit a degree of separation between them but our attraction program um, and, and we had a kind of a, a structural change in our organization a couple of years ago um, so we hired a full-time business attraction or um, business recruitment director um, and uh, so we didn't change the number of staff that we had we just kind of reorganized a little bit so that that's, that staffing and, the, and those roles looked a little bit different. Um, and I'll talk about that in just a second, but the attraction side is also super important. Um, and as you all know, that's, that's what typically hits the news and that's what um, the elected officials often like to see. Those announcements, we got new business coming, we got new investment coming, we got new job creation. Those jobs are you know, above average wages and all of those good things like, that we like to hear. Um, and, uh, and we say that's kind of the sexy part of economic development, and it is, and it's important because it continues to diversify the local economy and continues to spread the tax base, so the tax rates remain low. Um, and, and, and it's important because in your community, as in, in mine, probably, if you look at the list of industry today versus 15 or 20 years ago, or even 30 years ago, there's a lot of those those companies that were really big employers 
even 10 years ago, and they're not here anymore. So we got to make sure that we continue to bring um, fresh companies in so that when those other companies um, are downsizing or business models are changing and they're laying off employees, those employees have somewhere to go. Um, that's, that's my pitch to our employers now who want to know in our tight labor market, why are we still trying to attract um, new business and industry to the community? And that's really the reason why. Um, so the third program area is, uh, is marketing. And I'll, I will kind of pull that out into a, separate, um, into a separate role there. So marketing is really important um, and it really supports uh, particularly the attraction side. So marketing takes the place of, uh, or, or takes the form of our website, for example. We, um, we built a new website probably about four years ago, and that's always a work in progress. We try to make sure that it's um, always relevant and the data is always up to date because uh, we know that in, in our environment today, um, companies that are looking or site selection consultants that are looking on behalf of companies um, are most of the time checking us out via our website long before we ever have any idea that there's, that there's a prospect out there. And some of those inquiries live and die by the website. So if the website doesn't look good, if it doesn't have the information that they're looking for, if the data is not current and up to date, that can eliminate us right off the bat. And I've heard it said many, many times, we talk a lot about the site selection consultant, but really that, that consultant is a site elimination consultant. So their job for the company is to take um, this big funnel and start with lots of potential communities and keep narrowing that down to just those final three or four where the company is ultimately gonna make that decision. So the marketing is really important. Um, we have um, recently, in addition to the website and just ongoing with that, we have recently worked with um, a marketing firm out of Greensboro to develop some um, unified messaging and also some, um, some flyers, marketing flyers that we can use on our website that we can take with us when we go to trade shows or when we go to visit consultants or prospects. Um, and uh, so that's a really important part of what we do as well. And some of that messaging that, we, that, that they developed for us now is going back into the website so that there's consistency of, across all of those areas. Um, and, and what we're working on right now because uh, because of the, the pandemic and because people aren't traveling as much and because that's probably going to be a changing model moving forward, um, we are in communication with a company that we're, we're hoping to get board approval to spend some dollars um, and develop some, some high quality marketing videos uh, that we can use both on our website and they'll pull out some shorter clips maybe that deal with specific topics and then even shorter clips that we can run on social media uh, in a loop. And so we, we feel like that's a really critical part of marketing right now going forward. And it's, and it's very expensive to do that um, and to do it right. But I think it's pretty critical. Um, so the fourth primary area that we have is product development. And product development goes truly hand in hand with business attraction somewhat with the BRE program, but more with the business attraction, because if you don't have sites and you don't have buildings, you're just, you're just playing out of an empty sandbox. And, uh, and that, doesn't work. that doesn't work too well. Um, so from a building standpoint, we are super challenged right now. We've got very few buildings in our community that are available and those that are, um, we, we sometimes refer to those as a special needs building. Um, and even though even those buildings, I, my wife is a special a special ed teacher, so I, I can say that right. Um, these are our special needs building. Even some of those special needs buildings um, are are going off the market um, just because there's not that much building inventory. And and if you've taken a look at or talked to any general contractors lately, the price of building materials right now is just skyrocketing. And so that's a real challenge for us. And um, so what we're doing is we're really focusing right now on um, let's, getting, let's get some sites that are ready to go, not just a piece of dirt that says, you know, it's X, XYZ site, but a, a site that, 
if we're doing some due diligence, we're talking about um, you know, infrastructure planning, um, all of those different things. So at least if we don't have a building, at least, at least we've got a lot of information and we've checked some boxes uh, because we want to eliminate uncertainty. Uncertainty also kills deals. Um, so it's uncertainty and a long timeline are the things that kill deals. So those, um, that's kind of high level, our, our primary program areas. Um, and we do have three staff members. So we've got a lot going on with just three people. Um, as I mentioned several years ago, we changed that structure a little bit. Um, traditionally for many years, it was the president of the organization also served as the, um, the lead in terms of business attraction. And um, I've been with the organization here a little over seven years and I started out in the BRE field. And so when there was an opportunity for me to step into the lead role in our organization, you know, our board was looking at how do we do this most effectively? And they said, we need to prioritize the existing industry. And rather than bringing somebody in and trying to develop that relationship all over again, they left me in that primary BRE role in addition to managing the day-to-day -day, um, operations of our organization. Um, honestly, it's, it's a lot to try to, those are, those are almost two full-time jobs or they can be easily two full-time jobs in and of themselves. Um, so it's a bit of a challenge to juggle all of that. And, um, and my existing industry, frankly, aren't getting as much love as I'd like for them to have right now. Um, but that's, you know, it is what it is. And we've got funding constraints and we've got three staff members and we're, and we're still doing a great job. Um, I just always would like to do a little bit better. Um, so when we made that shift, we then hired on a business recruitment director, somebody that was really focused on the attraction side of things. And because product development is so tied to that, she also is, um, manages our product development ish, initiatives as well. Um, and, you know, again, she's, she can't sell out of an empty wagon. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, then our third staffer is our manager of marketing and research. And as you can tell, there's, there's a lot of overlap in all of this, um, but uh, she really focuses on, on, on the marketing. And that's, um, so that, uh, again, that's a little different. Our attraction, our business recruitment director focusing on attraction, that's marketing as well, but that's really external marketing. And she's going out and she's visiting, um, making those contacts. Um, this marketing is really more focused on, let's, all right, let's make sure the website is up to date. Let's, let's really spearhead the marketing collateral that we're working with. Um, she also does uh, the research. So we've got a, a research tool called Jobs EQ, and it provides us with a tremendous amount of um, workforce data. And so anytime we get inquiries, you know, those, those go to Lisa and she digs around and pulls that information. And that could be for a local business, could be for local government, you know, that information is available. Um, and she also serves as our, as our office manager. So we affectionately refer to Lisa as the glue. She's the office glue, um, holding everything together. And, um, and as much as we have segregated roles in, in function and reality, they're not segregated. There's a lot of overlap and there's constant communication. And you know, if somebody's out of the office dealing with you know, a site visit, for example, and an inquiry comes in, one of us that's in the office handles that initial inquiry until it can get over to the right person. Um, I think that's one of the challenges that some on our, our board have had in the past was, um, and, and even, even currently, is there's this mentality that, all right, this is your lane, you stay in your lane. This is your lane, you gotta stay in your lane, and this is your lane. And, and when we talk about, you know, I'm hopping over into this lane and they're hopping over into this other lane, there's, it ra it's raised questions. Um, well, why are they doing that? So just trying to keep that information flow and making sure that we're um, kind of managing those expectations, uh, which, is, um, which is always a good thing, but it's always a bit of a challenge as well. 
So lots of that, lots of interaction and lots of overlap. So, um, so that kind of big picture is who we are as an organization and what we do and how we function and how we're funded. And I've talked a lot. So what have I not hit on? What are other questions that you, that you have? Um, how, can, how can I help? I think it's a fantastic overview. We appreciate uh, all the information you've shared. It seems that, and we're just starting this process, but that each county, municipality, independent organization, conductor of economic development has uh, a different model and often is adapted to the context within their working personalities, the talents at their disposal and so forth. And it sounds like for a three person department, uh, you accomplish a remarkable amount. And uh, that's impressive. I have a quick question about your product development. Yep. The funding that you receive, 70% from Randolph County, 20 from the other municipalities served and 10% from the private sector. Is there enough there for you to do speculative building? Not, not on our own, no. Um, we've- so you uh, work with private developers? It, yes, and yes. And, and this is, that's really been a relatively um, new foray for us. And we do own one piece of property um, and it's, uh, but it was, it was purchased by largely by Randolph County government. And because they have a significant investment, even that we're not free to just set an asking price and sell it or discount the price. All of that still has to go back through approval with, uh, with the county commissioners. Um, so what we have been doing though, is we've been talking with, um, with several private developers, two, probably two groups in particular. Um, one of those, we, we were very, very close to signing uh, an MOU with them to put up a spec building in return for the city and the county committing to up to two years of lease back if the building doesn't sell um, or if it's not you know, committed either sold or leased by the time that it's um, fully completed. Uh, we, were, we were very close to doing that. And then the developer reached out and said, you know, we were just pricing out one of these spec buildings very similar to this in another community and pricing is up 60%. And so we're stopping all spec development right now. Um, so what we're doing on that particular site right now is the developer has said, you know, here's, here's a cost to get this in a more ready state. We can do all the due diligence, we can do our architectural um, renderings, we can do our, all of our civil um, design work and we can get it permitted. And, and that way, if we have a client and they're looking for this 100,000 plus or minus square foot building, uh, we can say in six months, we can have this done and we've got certainty because it's rezoned, all the due diligence is done, all of the design work is done. It's just ready to, it's ready to rock and roll. Um, and we're working on that. Probably that'll be a four way split between the developer, our organization, the city and the county. Um, and so those are the approaches that were taken. Um, we also have a couple of developers that have identified some land that may be suitable for future industrial park development. So we're, right now going through the process of sharing cost on the due diligence on those sites. Um, we've had a water and sewer study done on one. Um, we're doing um, environmental work and borings, you know, geotech work on another. And if that moves forward, what, what will happen there is that our local governments will primarily fund and we'll go after grants and so forth, but those, they'll primarily fund the kind of the horizontal development, the water and the sewer and the um, and the road infrastructure. And then the commitment from the private developer is they will keep a spec building up and available in the park until the park's built out. Now they don't have to be the developer to build every building. If we bring a client in, they certainly want their shot at that, but it could be private sale, pri private uh, development. Um, but those two developers are, if we can, if we can keep moving this forward and, and I'm optimistic, um, We'll, we'll invest, but it's local government dollars. Um, we don't have the capacity in our organization to do that. 
Um, and that certainly is one of the things that we have talked about internally that would be great if we did a funding campaign with private dollars to be able to have some money set aside. Maybe it's not even spec development. Maybe it's we can get some really quality properties under option. Um, and then we hold the option to that and we negotiate the pricing with the end user and all of those different things. Can you expand a little bit about on your 20 board uh, member board, 12 or private sector? I know that um, all members are also funders. What type of, do you have a nominating committee? Is it an application process? If could, you could expand on that a little bit. Sure, it's, it's very informal. Um, typically our nominating committee every year consists of those few board members that are rolling off our board. And, um, and they're having those conversations amongst themselves. And then they're looking again at, okay, um, can, do, do we need one area of the, of, the, of the county to be represented that's not currently represented? Or is there one industry sector um, that uh, is not represented that we really need to, to have represented? So um, often really for all practical purposes, the executive committee serves as more or less as the nominating committee. Uh, but there's no, there's no formal application process. Um, we, would, we would simply approach, we'll sit around the table, have conversation, and there'll be some names that, that come up. And then myself or another member of that executive committee will reach out to that individual and say, hey, we're having these conversations. Um, you're a member, or would you be willing to consider serving on our board um, you're going to be one of several candidates and we've got to go through this process on our board. But, um, you know, if you're, if you're interested, then let me share a little bit more information about what it looks like and what the responsibilities are and what the time requirements are. So that's really how that, how that functions. Um, I, the other thing I would say is the way our bylaws are written, our membership, our private membership um, is required to vote on those new board members, I wouldn't, I would not really recommend that to be honest with you. Um, I think, um, you know, we, we have an annual meeting and our, our members come together and yes, we keep them informed about what's going on, but you know, it's a, it's a rubber stamp to be honest with you. I've never sat in one of our annual meetings and had somebody object to one of the nominees to serve on our board. Um, so frankly, it might be, it might be easier if um, that's, that's a board decision, um, especially when we run into last year where we didn't have an annual meeting because of COVID and uh, we may not this year. We're still limited to 25 people indoors. You mentioned the sources of funding for your budget. Um, where would you say you know, in general, at a, in generalities, where do your dollars go towards proportionately? Is it the staff? Is it the development activity or the, um, you know, the product development activities? Or just give me an idea of how your budget's allocated. So, um, so staffing is, is and, and those related costs are going to be our, our largest single expenditure. Um, and then, um, yeah, I should have broken all of that out for you uh, by percentage. I can tell you, so I'll just give you some rough numbers. Um, all right, so out of a half a million dollar budget, our, um, our salaries and you know, our administrative expenses are gonna be I don't know, probably 20%, something like that. Maybe maybe more than that, probably more than that. I'm having trouble running these numbers in my head. Um, but we've got, so we've, we've got um, the biggest chunk is gonna be, single chunk is gonna be our, our salaries and, and related expensive benefits and those types of things. Um, then we have additional administrative costs for things like, you know, professional development and association dues and all of those different things. 
Um, and then we also have existing industry. So um, our existing industry line item is a relatively new line item in the last couple of years with dollars that are specifically focused on promoting and supporting existing industry. Most of that typically fell under our administrative costs, um, but we are starting to build that budget a little bit so that we've got some dollars set aside for programs, that type of thing. Um, business development dollars, um, you know, that's a, you know, fairly, a fairly sizable um, sum that we have right there as well sizable in the big scheme of things, 40,000 bucks, something like that uh, for business development. And that's websites and travel and, um, you know, meals and client entertainment and all of those different things. Um, and then we have industrial product development. And this year we ended up with about $100,000, a little over $100,000 in product development. Um, some of that actually we pulled out of our, we did a fund balance appropriation. We've got a very healthy fund balance right now uh, because we've been well under budget the last couple of years. And, as, and, and we also sold part of, a, part of the land that we own. So um, we pulled some of those dollars and put them right back into product development so that we could be doing some of these studies. And um, that's our, our board meetings coming up in about a week and a half. And that's one of the things that we're gonna try to do our best to is to spend down those product development dollars by the end of our fiscal year, end of June. Um, and then the final, the final major category that we have is just for partnership and membership, stakeholder events, those, those types of things. And that's a relatively small part of our budget. Um, and I can, I can actually do a breakdown of all those percentages and, uh, and send them over to PJ if that would be helpful. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I'll send I'll send you an email and copy all the task force members, and then you can send it. You can email it back to us. That'd be good. Okay. Okay. I guess uh, all your employees is three people, right? So, are government county government employees? We are not. No, we are not county county employees. We are. Um, we're going back to that structure as a five hundred one c six. So we are nonprofit employees that are under contract with Randolph County. So we, we do not participate in the, um, the state retirement system. Uh, from a benefit standpoint, we do have 80% of our health insurance that is covered um, by the organization. So we pitch in 20% individually. Um, and that includes vision, um, dental is an add-on. Um, but again, it's at that same breakdown, 80-20. Um, and then we also offer um, vacation. So right out of the gate, you get uh, two weeks of vacation time. Um, and then that continues to accrue over time based upon longevity um, with up to once you have 15 years of service in, you have four weeks of vacation time. Uh, we have a 401k plan. Uh, the organization does a 5% um, match on that, there's no, there's no employer, I'm sorry, there's no employee match requirement. So it's just an automatic 5%. And we're, we're all contributing um, individually that or more here as a part of our, five, our 401k. Um, and then we also have, um, oh, oh, our, our vacation is use it or lose it, right? So if we, we can carry over um, so if you have two weeks of vacation, you can carry over two days into the next fiscal year. We do it all in fiscal year. If you have three weeks of vacation, you can carry over three. Uh, if you have four weeks of vacation, you can carry over four, four unused days, but um, it's use it or lose it. And then our, our, um, our medical is, uh, you know, we have sick leave and we accrue um, eight days per year. So two days per quarter. And that and that continues to accrue. So that's not a use it or lose it. So we've got those, you know, we've got those banked. So we're here long enough and then we end up with a more of a major medical situation and we need to take 30, 30 days out. If we've got those days accrued, those days are eligible uh, for use for us. Is 
So does Randolph County have a Chamber of Commerce, a Tourism Development Authority, an Uptown Development, and how are they, are they in any way connected to you or how do you work together? Yes, so we have Tourism Development Authority. Uh, we also have actually multiple Chambers of Commerce around the, around the county. We have the, there's a primary one that's Ashboro Randolph. Um, and they have members from across the county. Um, then we have Archdale Trinity Chamber, which they, they're the northwest corner, and they are very closely aligned even with the High Point area. Um, so it kind of makes sense for them to be a separate unit. And then some of our smaller communities have Chambers of Commerce. Um, so we, um, we interact very favorably with them. We're a member of all the Chambers of Commerce, and, um, and the Ashboro Randolph Chamber is a member of our organization. And we, we talk when there are issues that are of, um, of, of common, you know, common need or common, common challenge. Um, our, we, our worlds are, are divergent though. Our focus, as I mentioned, really is specifically on that industrial sector. So manufacturing, warehousing, distribution, that's what we do and that's what we do well. And we provide that support to that business sector, again, regardless of whether they're members. Um, so the chamber model is a little bit different. The chamber really, although they've got manufacturing members, it's really more geared towards, um, you know, your retail and your service um, and, and to the networking events and the B2B type stuff, um, which again, is really not who we are. And then our, our TDA, um, again, we certainly, coordinate with them at times. Um, when we were working on our most recent logo, we, we talked with them and we got their feedback before we moved forward. And, and in fact, the same guy that did ours has worked with them for a lot of years. And the last time they did a logo, they used some elements from what we had incorporated into ours. Um, but that really is more focused on the tourism and the attractions and working with the hoteliers and um, and, the, and, those, and, the, and the TDA is funded by um, occupancy taxes. So they are an authority. Uh, the chamber is almost solely funded by member dues. So, that's what, you know, so we have a little bit more flexibility. So when the pandemic hit and they were losing um, revenue from events, that's the other big generator. So when they were losing revenue from events, and they had members from the smaller businesses that were dropping out because of just financially, they were losing money. Um, you know, that really hurt their staff. It was really nice for us to have that stable government appropriation. And we, we already, you know, they, they, the government, local governments, um, we billed them at the very beginning of our fiscal year. And so they had already stroked those checks for the most part and we had the money in the bank. And so we, um, so we, we weren't, we weren't challenged in many ways like with the TDA and the chambers were. Um, so we, we try to differentiate ourselves. Um, and I think some people in the community get that and some people don't, but we certainly have a very good working relationship with both, um, both organizations and, and the sets of the chambers. If there's anything you could change, what would it be? If there's anything that I could change. Make it better. Um, I think, um, you know, I'd love to have more money. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it, it would be helpful at times if we had one more staffer uh, or at least a part-time staffer, but part-time is very difficult. Um, you know, somebody that could take care of some of those typical office type responsibilities, that would be really nice. Um, I would, I probably would, um, I, I've alluded to, I probably would not have our membership selecting our board members. Um, I, don't, I don't know that that's such a great idea. Um, I probably would not have a, a board that is that large. Um, you know, when you start having 20 people or so, it begins to get a little unwieldy and if people aren't really fully engaged, and to, to be honest with you, you know, it's just us in the room, right? So to be honest with you, we probably have almost more challenge getting our elected officials to participate in our board meetings than we do our private sector folks. 
Um, we've had a couple of times where it's been a challenge. Um, we had one time over the last year where we couldn't get a quorum. We just didn't have enough people. So, um, so that was a little bit of a challenge. You know, I'm, I, I'm on the fence about um, multiple consecutive terms. Um, sometimes with some of our board members, it would be fantastic if we were able to re-up them for another three years automatically. Um, some of them, it would almost be disastrous if we had to invite them to join us for another three years. Um, and you probably- It speaks to your selection process. If you had your wishes there, then maybe you wouldn't have that as a concern. That's right, that's right. Um, but even, and even then, it's sometimes it's still the unknown, right? Um, so I think those are, you know, those are some of the challenges, some of the things I'd do differently. Um, to be honest with you, you know, I joke a little bit about, about the money, but, um, you know, I might, I might be pursuing a fundraising campaign right now if we didn't have some, hadn't had some pushback from our board about that. Um, because that's, there's, there's dollars make the world go around, right? And I hate, hate to say, it, I think we're doing very well with the resources that we have. Um, we could probably be doing a little bit more if we had um, some more resources. Do you expand a little bit on if you had the, I guess, the perfect process of qualifying people on the board? Have you ever given that any thought to maybe how that would be structured in your world that would be the best benefit? Obviously, like you said, people who finding those people who are going to come and they're ready to you know, they, they've read their agenda and, and that they're, they've bought into it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so f the first thing that I would do is I would try to make sure we, we, we've had at times um, some members that have gone out, some board members that have gone out after some other potential board members who are not current partnership members. And and as a result of that, if they join the board, we've got a new, we've got a new member. Um, and sometimes that works out really well um, and sometimes not so well. So I think ideally my first pick would be somebody that's already um, a member of our organization and somebody that is all, already very engaged in what we're doing, they, they really get it. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, we've had many of those over the years and we have you know, many of those on our board right now. Um, so current member, somebody that's already very well acquainted with the organization and what we do and has, has already been you know, bought in. Um, you know, I'm, the other thing I'm on the fence about is, um, yes, you have to be a partnership member and, and you know, I, I, might, I might carve out um, two or three board seats specifically for those that are the highest funders of the organization. Um, so really, really more of a pay to play type of opportunity. Um, if you're gonna buy in, I mean, we, we've, we've, some of our local governments um, that are very small are contributing 500 bucks a year to us. And we've got some private industry that are contributing 2,500 bucks a year. Uh, to us. And so I would probably um, carve out maybe a couple of seats for those higher level funders, um, kind of as an enticement, first of all, to, um, hey, you want to serve on our board and really get active, we'd love to have you um, contribute more. And, um, and then secondly, uh, you know, it makes sense to me that those that are bigger contributors have, a, have more of a seat at the table. Um, yeah, otherwise, I don't know, that's, it's, it's a hard, sometimes it's a hard process to really, um, to really nail down. Not an exact science, is it? It's not. <laughs> no, sometimes you can think you got the best person and, and then, you know, they stop showing up. I, I will say that we do have our, our full board meets every other month. And our executive committee meets on the off month. Um, if we have a provision in our bylaws that if somebody um, does not show up to two consecutive meetings, then it's my responsibility to reach out to them and say, "Hey, you know what's going on? Are there challenges? Are there 
you know, are there, are there missed opportunities because of work or you're just not engaged? Um, and, and try to put that prompt. Anybody that misses three consecutive meetings from the private sector, they're automatically off the board. So I don't think that's too much to ask that that's missing consecutively, you know, six months worth of board meetings. Um, on the elected official side, uh, they are free to send a, um, you know, send somebody to join us from their organization if they can't make it to a meeting. Um, but I can't, I can't tell them they can't uh, stay on our board. So I can encourage them to find another uh, representative of the of their local government. But you know, it, it is what it is. Is it is it possible that uh, I don't know if it's public information? Can we get a copy of your bylaws or? Sure. Yep. Glad to send those. If you if you don't mind. Sure. I'm trying to think of anything else that I haven't hit that would be. You have hit it on quite a bit, given yeah. us a lot of information to digest. We are uh, grateful for your time, your perspective, and, and some of your comments, your candor. Um, I'll, I'll offer just one more from, from my side of the table suggestion. Um, we went through this process of, so we had a, a long time organizational president who retired and she had over 20 years in and she retired about, you know, about four years ago. Um, and we went, we actually went quite a, quite a length of time without anybody serving in that role. And we were just kind of scrambling to try to figure out what was going on. And mean, meantime, we had some board members and others that were meeting behind closed doors about what does the future of our organization look like? And we just, we were totally left in the dark about what was going on, about what those conversations looked like. Um, so I would encourage you to um, not share everything on all of your conversations, but, but be open with the staff that you have now because it's a time of uncertainty and that brings a little bit of anxiety with it as well. What is this going to look like? Am I going to retain my job? What is my role going to look like? So um, I would encourage you as much as is possible to, to maintain those open lines of communication with your current staff and, and at least share some update information as, as you can. And I know you, don't, you, you can't and probably don't want to share everything but they're, they're the professionals in the room doing this job and, and their feedback can be helpful to you as well as you go through this process. And maybe you're already doing that. I hope you are, but I, you know. Well, I don't, I don't know. This is, this is a task force. This, the, this group here is just a task force of assembling information from different, different counties and how they operate to kind of get an idea of what we could develop here right now. You know, we're not part of the EDC. These these people aren't, so we don't really have the interaction with the staff, and, and so we're not really clear on all the things that are going on. And it's so we're, we're hoping that this this whole process that we're going through will help us develop a structure so that we can, you know, navigate the, those those communications and, and those avenues that, that that keep it connected together with all the different department heads and all the people that are involved because that. Right now, I don't think we have a good line of communication all the way around the board from county commissioners to EDC to the, to, the, to the staff who's working. I think it's just, it's all there. It's all in the pot, but it's not very well connected. And I'm hoping that this task force gives us a really good plan that we can maybe stitch it together better. Great. As, do you currently have, is it a county department? Is your economic development a county department? Yes. Yeah, okay. It's, a, it's county. We all don't right. have any private. Uh, enterprise involvement whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and I and I have to say this, but you know, before we sign off here, to assume we'll do that here shortly. Um, I, I traveled with Stuart Gilbert several years ago on a trip up to New York, New Jersey, visiting with some site selection consultants. And so I just have to say that I'm I'm very well aware that everything is better in person. <laughs> <laughs>
You left a lasting impression with you. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> He's, he, 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 left, he left us with that with every consultant visit that we had. So uh, that, stuck, that stuck with me. Oh, cool. oh thanks, Very Kevin. Cool. We appreciate that a lot and, and all of your time. <laughs> Certainly look forward to reviewing the bylaws and the budget breakdown. That's, that's really helpful for us through this process. So can't thank you enough. Yep, glad to do it. If there's any other questions that I can answer, um, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help however I can. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Thank appreciate it. Appreciate your job. All right. Have a great Thanks rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Goodbye. Very interesting. Yes. I think four is going to be about the right number, PJ. You know, four different models for mm -hmm. us to sort of hopefully take bits and pieces from. And, um, it's interesting how varied and also some of the same similar themes and challenges. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we can uh, make good use. Get two more and then we'll have to talk maybe mm -hmm. in the fourth meeting about how to go about you know, coming to, to how to make the best use of our sixth and final meeting. With that, the, that this last meeting, or you know, if it's two meetings to bring get the whiteboard out because I know they yeah. like okay, here's all these different programs. What do they have in common with it? separate? I don't know if that's a, it's an exercise you want to go through in the meetings, but that's totally up to you guys. Yeah. I think that's in my impression, the, my concept of what we're trying to do would be just take in the information from all four. And go through it there. But this isn't obviously we're not going to have a board set up where we have rotating municipalities come on, you know, representation come on and off because of the lack of municipalities. Uh, isn't so, Bushy Fork Municipal? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell the one. I'll tell you. But uh, I mean, as we call down to, to what we think maybe could could apply here, have some merit in applying the, the brainstorming session. Again, just a framework for construct that we think the administration should consider. So, question County only funds the UBC here now, correct? Mm -hmm. No city. No, I know. Not, no, no. Is there, is there a certain aware. amount? Is, is, there, is it the same amount every year, PJ, or is it how does it how do they determine what that? It's a line item on the budget. It's a, the will of the commissioners, whatever they decide in the budget that they can approve. Has it been pretty steady or is it fluctuating? Yes. And that's the problem, right? That's There's the problem not a reliable, this. ongoing, perennial source of funding. And that's why we need a model that would allow for consistent funding. Yeah, I mean, we want, to, we want to stay, we want the county to you know, obviously yeah. work with us yeah. and still fun stuff, but we right. we also need a secondary right. mechanism sure. because you never know from election cycle to election cycle, from economy to economy, what the budget is going to allow that's going to go into economic development. And um, so there's always uncertainty from the from the county funding side. And I think it's budget and what we're saying too, is independence too, so that as you have those electoral cycles, you have a little more self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. You know, that's key. That I mean, that's at least in the previous order. Yes, yeah, somebody right. doing recruitment can't be in mid process of a, of a courtship, if you will. It may be a long process, and you're halfway through, they think they're really making some progress, they get some, you know, some uh, benchmarks, and then there's a reconstitution of the makeup of commissioners because of the election, and then suddenly. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have to start over again yeah. because the direction we were headed is not the direction we right. were yeah, right. So that's where it's an independent, reliable funding if we could come up with a construct that would allow for that. And independent direction. You know, that just is not Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a secondary arm or, you know, if you're looking at a stool, they've got the government, they've got the private sector, I don't know what else we would put in there, but it just gives you, you know, some the ability to become nimble. Government mm -hmm. can tend to move very slowly and you know, move difficultly and, and when you've got the private sector involved in there, it, it tends to move more aggressively than the time is in the market, which is a benefit. Agreed. 
know if um, the city at any point's ever been approached about participation turn. in funding. Here the minute, I just want to make sure that we get to We have to return here because we're we're oh. out oh. here, so oh. we're still yeah. 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 So, that's okay. okay. No, we, <laughs> we're still here. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say if you want to adjourn, then I'll make that motion. Okay. So. All right, keep adjourning second. We are done with our business. Thank you.